the news business is changing at frightening speed. It's creating opportunities, but also massive challenges. It's hard to keep up, let alone know what's coming next. When I was asked to set up the BBC's online news here in this room nine years ago, I don't think I ever imagined that it would get this big this quickly. Then again, in those days, we didn't have any broadband. It wasn't even very much narrow band. We certainly hadn't heard of blogs and podcasts and wikis and all the other things that are now part of the everyday language of the web. The idea of a news provider existing in only one medium has become untenable. The old divisions are disappearing. Going multi-platform has become a necessity. Even the times is a changing. There's never been a more exciting time to be a journalist. Real-time journalism, to me, is the most exciting thing going. The web, the web allows a journalist, just as an individual, to tell stories in ways we hadn't before, to show, to let readers into the whole process of storytelling, to introduce pictures in a way we hadn't before, to show our lists of contacts, to have rough interviews if we want to, to show, expose them to the audio of people we've interviewed, um, to show them 50 links that we might have used to get that story. So from my point of view, it's all part of the telling the story. We, we haven't even explored the limits of that, of how we become much better at sto as storytellers. Not many newspaper executives are as bullish as Peter Bale, but the new media giants that dominate the web certainly are. The border between Iraq and Syria is a long and porous border, 650 kilometers. But the Syrian government says they have 7,000 troops amassed here, and the border is secure. Yahoo hired Kevin Sykes from NBC as its first backpack journalist. His task is to cover all the world's war zones in one year. It's a risky business for all concerned. As far as a business model, we're not making a lot of money for Yahoo right now. In fact, I'm spending a lot of money. And I think they realized that coming in. They probably didn't realize how much I was going to spend because it, it takes a lot to keep somebody on the road. I almost feel like an astronaut. I have a mission control team back in Santa Monica, but I'm out there taking a spacewalk, going to places where I have to have very expensive tethers, uh, satellite modems, satellite phones, ways to, to connect to the internet. Uh, that's not cheap you know, when you're in the middle of Afghanistan or when you're in the middle of a war zone in Iraq. Of course. It always helps to have a lot of money, but you don't have to have deep pockets to be an internet journalist. You can publish for virtually nothing from virtually anywhere. And millions and millions of people are doing just that with their blogs. So-called citizen journalism thrives on the perceived shortcomings of the traditional media. Bloggers claim they're more independent and not compromised by advertising. It allows you to look at specific fields that might not otherwise receive attention. It allows you to question the larger media, the mainstream media, if you will, uh, their take on things. And it, uh, it's a new uh, grassroots form of journalism that allows everyday people to write and to express their views. And I don't know that that would be possible to the extent that it's happening. Now. The Median Critic site is European Weblog of the Year. It analyzes the way German media covers American affairs, attracting 100,000 unique visitors a month. That's not huge, but its engagement with its readers is intense. We get a lot of leads from readers, we get a lot of feedback, we get a lot of compliments and also criticism, and it really helps us to sharpen what we write. Uh, sometimes we make mistakes, and readers point it out. We get almost immediate feedback in our comments section. And uh, without our readers, it really would be possible. Current TV goes further. News reports on its website and cable channel are made by the public. The owners believe that inexpensive cameras and the internet have opened up television. They predict that other broadcasters will also have to switch from being producers to a publishing role. Television was first created, and for the last 50 years, because it's been so expensive, it's been the exclusive domain of a few providers, like NBC or the BBC or NHK. Because of that, in any sort of dictatorial, to use a correct term, uh, process in which one provides for many, the range of choice is not really great because there's no competition. Now the ability to make television is very, very open, the barriers have dropped, and the Internet provides a limitless platform. 
So for the first time, the range of what is television can expand enormously. Television is a fantastic medium. It's about manipulating pictures, sound, music, writing, graphics, storytelling. It's incredibly plastic. It should produce miraculous and beautiful and powerful things. It doesn't yet. It will when it's in the hands of individuals who can bring to the table authorship. And that's really what's lacking in television journalism. There's no sense of authorship yet. Well, maybe. Certainly the internet as a method of distribution is already very important to the broadcasters. The big control rooms like this one are now taking in lots of footage every day over the internet. We can already see that user-generated video is going to become very important. This was the scene yesterday on board a Circle Line train moments after the Edgware Road bomb. Most of the best footage of the July bombings in London last year came from people's mobile phones. The public are now camera crews in waiting for big stories to happen. It's a fundamental change in news coverage. But there are dangers in all this. New students coming out of journalism colleges now, I think there is the potential for them to expect news to come to them. They're used to stuff coming down fax machines and screens popping up and emails being sent to them from all manner of sources. The risk is that we lose those, those fundamental journalism filters, being able to critically analyse what's coming in and asking why this person is sending me this information, what do they intend we need to do with it, what are the implications of this, being rigorous, checking facts, not just going onto the internet, going onto Google and typing in something and, and you know, accepting what's on the screen as, as read. You have to go out and check it. The trouble with the proliferation of digital channels and smaller and smaller newsrooms, it becomes less time to do that. I think that's an excellent point, and it's vital that we don't overlook it. This is not just about business. Yes, we're losing audiences and circulations and revenues, but we're also losing trust. And in this internet age, with new sources of information appearing to compete with us all the time, it's vital that we raise our journalistic standards if we want to secure our future.